You talk a lot about how different both of these presidential candidates are, and they are different in so many ways, but there is something unusual that unites them. Both Biden and Trump have actually faced a significant and recent national crisis, the pandemic, which has now killed over a million Americans. And that actually provides a very serious, substantive and policy oriented way to measure how they have acted as president, albeit in different moments, dealing with that very big crisis. And this is, of course, a big part of how presidencies are tested. FDR's legacy was not only shaped by his ideology or his vision, although we remember that, but, of course, by dealing with that ongoing and devastating depression that preceded him. And Bernie Sanders and others have said their lesson there is not only that he was focused or good at leadership, but that he also used that opportunity to go big even amidst the crises and the pain. Here's the New York Times in 1933. Roosevelt inaugurated acts to end the national banking crisis quickly. Everyone knew there were problems. He seized on the moment and launched the New Deal within his first 100 days. This nation is asking for action and action now. FDR took action that not, not, not only affected people then, but as you see, has this echoes all the way to today in finance and banking. And he spoke to Americans in his fireside chats. You people must have faith. You must not be stampeded by rumors or guesses. Let us unite in banishing fear. We have provided the machinery to restore our financial system, and it is up to you to support and make it work. It is your problem, my friends, your problem no less than it is mine. Together, we cannot fail. That was straight talk, uplifting in places, but also quite blunt, not exactly pandering or passing the buck or blaming. And when President Obama came into office, it wasn't as bad as the Depression, but it was something that affected so many millions of families and put so many people out of their homes, out of their jobs. It was the Great Recession. On the broadcast tonight, Meltdown, the American financial system is rocked to its foundation as top Wall Street institutions topple under a mountain of debt. Not in generations has Wall Street absorbed the number of body blows it took today. Lehman, Merrill, AIG, their problems all stemming from the housing crisis and a new era of tight credit where banks are nervous about giving loans for appliances, cars, homes making Wall Street's troubles a Main Street issue and potentially putting economic recovery even farther out of reach. Obama made big moves in his first 100 days as well. It is time to set a new course for this economy, and that change must begin now. Trump's crisis, of course, was the pandemic. And his improvised and sometimes chaotic response was a contrast to those other presidents you just saw, who dealt with a crisis, but really made the rebound and a steady hand their focus, and they got national acclaim for it. It's widely established that Trump's own pandemic record hurt him in his 2020 loss. He said so himself. And while Biden still draws mixed reviews and a mixed approval rating right now, his aides argue he is doing the rebound like those other strong examples. And he's pushed massive spending, trying to lead the nation out of this crisis so many would like to forget. President Biden himself has discussed all of these lessons of different eras while also saying, quote, I'm no FDR, but... And as you see in that passage right there, he was saying it to the renowned historian Doris Kearns Goodwin, who was at a White House gathering where the president was discussing these very issues and the lessons of history. And we are thrilled to welcome back Doris Kearns Goodwin, renowned pres presidential historian. Her new book is an unfinished love story, a personal history of the 1960s. It's already debuted at number one on the New York Times bestseller list. Uh, Doris, one could argue that uh, as a great writer and historian, You've turned to less depressing topics. No surprise, people want to read that from you as well. <laughs> it's true. I've always chose challenging times. Somehow you want to be in those moments <laughs> of great excitement and great problems and great solutions to those problems. Yeah. Um, so we'll get to your book. It's all related. But uh, as you see there, when we look back, other presidents, both during and directly after crises, have seized on them to great effect, policy and 
in the politics, in the public acclaim they've gotten. How is President Biden doing on that measure? And is it different with the economy where everyone lived it and this pandemic where I would say anecdotally, I'm not a historian, but anecdotally, a lot of people want to just forget it. Well, you know, it's so interesting. There's a mystery of leadership. Even before FDR was able to institute the New Deal, that first inaugural address alone instilled confidence in the American people. He said, as you were saying earlier, he didn't make light of it. He said, only a foolish optimist would deny the brutal realities of the moment. But the only thing we have to fear, he famously said, is fear itself. But then he said, it's not your fault, American people. It's leadership that's failed. And I'm here to provide that leadership. With that a mo mon one address, confidence was projected, his confidence into the American people. That night, they said, we have a leader in headlines. The government still lives. A man wrote in among hundreds of thousands of letters saying, my roof has fallen off, my dog ran away, my wife is mad at me, I've lost my job, but everything's okay because you are there. So that's the mystery of leadership. He hadn't even done anything yet, but he projected his own confidence. So much happened with what President Biden has done. It has had a lot of largeness to it. It will affect us in the future. But still, somehow it hasn't fully translated into the fact that the people are giving him credit for the fact that the economy has gotten better. It's growing more than it did even in pre-Trump COVID. COVID, I think, did something to us to take our confidence away from ourselves. And nothing seems quite the same. And I don't think the trust is in government and the institutions the way it once was, certainly during FDR's time. So it's much harder for him to gain the traction, I think, because we're in a, such a different era. And if that's true, what you just said, do people know that? In other words, are you diagnosing that that might be the dynamic, but people don't even necessarily realize that's why they've lost faith? I mean, we, we are aware of a general sourness out here, and people don't always say, oh, I'm just scarred by COVID. You know, it's, it's really interesting. I'm not sure. I mean, I even just didn't think about that until trying to figure out what's going on right now. I mean, surely there still are problems in the economy. People are feeling the interest rates that they can't get a car or a new house or rental place. And there are still prices and inflation that are higher. But in general, the economy is doing better than economies in the world who have gone through COVID. And somehow that's not being felt as a collective. And maybe it's partly the polarization. A lot of people are saying this is a terrible economy. And then that begins to make you feel that's what it is. When people are asked about their own finances, 70 percent say they're OK. And then they still say, yeah, but something's wrong with right. the country as a whole. So something's going on here that is, I think, only explained by trust is diminished from the 19th. 1960s, something like 90 percent of the people used to believe the government would do the right thing most of the time. And then you've got the credibility gap that happened with Vietnam. You've got Watergate. You've got the polarization. You've got these last decades. And it's a sad thing, because we, if we don't believe in government, we have to believe in ourselves. I mean, we are the government, you know, and, and we've, got the, we've got the attention and the possibility of focusing on making things better. And that's what we saw in the 60s, for all the sadness of that decade I've now lived with for the past seven or eight years. And the ending of it being so sad with the assassinations and the campus violence and the riots, it was a time when people felt they could make a difference. And there was a collective sense of belonging to a country that was moving in a better direction. And when you feel that, then you feel better about yourself because you feel like you're contributing to your country. Uh, unfinished love story. We have it up on the uh, screen. People are already uh, clearly uh, reading it, tearing through it. Uh, and I bet many more hopefully will tonight. Uh, Doris Kearns Goodwin, uh, thank you for being here.